LDS. So basically, low density spreading, just to understand very clearly, I have added a clear explanation here. We already know distributed sequence CDMA, DS CDMA from old days of 11 A, B, and, and, and B, A and G, right? It's pretty spectrum. And so what we do in that one is we take its data bits and translate into chips. And those chips go on the time um, on the same frequency, basically, but the, 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 bit, the chips are on time. In time slot one, you will say one, then time slot two will say zero, one, zero, right? Another user will do on the same frequency with a different code, their chips. So that is what DSCDMA is. Basically, it is in time domain. So there is a variation of this called multi carrier CDMA in which we just do the opposite. You have a code like one goes to one zero one zero, but each of these chips go on a different sub carrier. Okay? And so multiple users will use the same time slot, they will have different code, and so each sub carrier will have a mixture of all these. Okay? So you can see the duality. Everything that you could do in the time domain, now you're doing in the frequency domain. This is called multi-carrier CDMA. And multi-carrier, so this one was extended by LDS to say two things. First of all, they said, now these are orthogonal codes. Both of these in the MC CDMA and DS CDMA, they are orthogonal codes. So when you take four bits, four bits permutation, I mean, basically the combination of four, four out of four, there's some number, not all of them are orthogonal. Okay? So very small number of codes you get, that means very small number of users, and it takes time to select the code. So they said, why can we find out some way so that we don't have to worry about the code, we can just randomly get the code. All right, so that is LDS. In LDS, they said, okay, we'll take a large number of sub-carriers, and then randomly select a code. There is little chance that two of us will select the same code, and so that is, and basically most of the code will be zero anyway, so that will be very, that's why it's called sparse, because the number of ones is very sparse. Okay? If you do that, if 30 of us, you know, select a code, and, and the, suppose the length is 60, you know, the chances of it colliding is much less. And so now, we don't have to worry about assigning the code before you can talk. You can just select a code and start talking. Okay? That is LDS. Low density spreading and um, code can be even be randomly chosen. Input and output are multi bit symbols. And so basically, I have given you an example of a single bit to multiple bits. Actually, this is a simplification because the input is not one bit, right? And the output is not a single sequence. Input is generally a complex number. Right? And the output is even more complex. Okay? So, so when you do your, if you see in the books, if you go and read about it, you'll find a lot of all this complex numbers, this and that. But this is the simplest way to understand it. Is that we have multiple carriers, large number of sub carriers, but most of them have zeros. Means we don't transmit on them. Right? But um, but we transmit on some small number of carriers and chances of collisions are small and you know, even if they're not orthogonal, we make it. Is that clear? LDS? Okay. So so SCMA is a variation of LDS. Okay? It is sparse multiple access and um, the main difference is that here you see if I am going to send x minus i y x plus minus x plus i y let's say this code zero one code I'm going to put that on all the sub carriers same code right and which there is one so somebody came up with the idea can we do better 
do we have to repeat the same code on all the subcarriers or can we just like you know that um, what was the um, symbol coding time space coding right and frequency coding right similar to that they came up with why don't we just do some more better coding than just repeat the same quantity right and that is what SCA, SCMA is that they don't repeat the same thing they do something better so instead of repeating the same symbols on different subcarriers as in LDS optimally coded symbols are placed on the different subcarriers so this is now they're trying to merge the idea of space frequency coding to LDS okay Symbols are mapped to higher dimensional complex symbols and then mapped to subcarriers. Now, this is a little bit complex to explain, but basically, they go from two dimension to four dimension and then you come back to two dimension. Okay? And that is just, I mean, very difficult to explain simply unless I go into multi dimensional thing. But the good thing is that the codes are non orthogonal. And so, the, you, you don't have to select orthogonal codes. Okay? So, you have a full space, full, full space. And more code books, and therefore you can have more users and more code books. By the way, each user, when they have one bit, they just need to know one entry that one is this one and zero is opposite of that. But if you have common, if you have two bits, then you need four entries. If you have three bits, you need eight entries, right? So that becomes a code book, right? So here, you can have more code books, basically more codes. And sparse means lot of zeros in the code book, and all codes in one code book have zeros in the same location. This is a simplification in the minute. Now LDS doesn't say that when you select a code, then it's row number 15, 17, and 20 should be zero. Okay. In this set, in this the rule they made that each user, when they select a code book, make sure that the same rows are zero in all throughout their code book, not everybody else's code book. So you don't have to ask somebody else where you have put zeros. But in your code book, all the rows will have the same rows will have zeros as you will notice in the next slide. Okay. And this is basically how many combinations are possible. And then this kind of coding is good because you don't need permission to speak as long as you use your code assigned to you, you can speak at the same time and somebody else can speak at the same time and somebody else can speak at the same time and and the basic station will understand the difference. Right? Otherwise you have to do this map and here we will do the map still, but we can do a group map now. Right? A group of stations can speak at the same time and most of them may not want to speak. All right? So that is a CNA. <coughs> Now, SCMA, so example shown here, we are going to do four entries. So, four C2, two of them will be zero. So, there are only six possible code books. And we will use all six. The only rule that I have made is that two of the rows in your code books will be zero. Right? So, four C2 gives you six. And so, there are six years. First user is assigned code book one. Actually, this has to be coordinated because two years cannot have the same code book, unlike LDS. So the base station will give you the code book, right? And when designing the code book, it will make sure that in the first user, two rows are all zeros. In the second user, two rows are all zeros. Third user, fourth user. They are different two rows. Okay, all right. So two bit symbols before requires k equal to four, n equal to two, and so that is six code books. Six user can be supported over four subcarriers. Okay, and each code book has two zeros in the same rows, and then you combine the spreading and decoding. So now basically, another way to look at this is that normally what we do in an LDS is that we take this bit as it's coming in, make a qualm out of it. Remember that complex number. We take two bits and make a complex number, and then we do the spreading. Here, there, is, there are not two, sim, two, in, two things here. It's just basically you take the bits coming in and you make four subcarriers out of them. Okay? So this is just one box. That's all it is saying. A question now. Yes, 
Okay. So the four use of what we are these numbers one 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 zero one one are indicating is that this user wants to transmit one one. This happens to want to transmit one one. This user wants to transmit one zero. This user wants to transmit one zero. You take your own number. These are just randomly selected that the user wants to select transmit. So now if this wants to transmit one one, it will go to the one one column here and transmit that. Okay. A row, I mean, and this one will go to that row and so on and so forth. So these are just different two bits that the one transmits. Because this code transmits two bits on four subcarriers. Yeah, so the thing is, more subcarriers you have, this parser it becomes and less collision there is possibility. Right? The the dense coding like here it is really not sparse that much. It is just two or four or two out of four and we are using all six possible codes. It is just more collision possibility, which means that if everybody started speaking, there will be more bit of it. Hopefully, not everybody will speak at the same time, and so there won't be a problem. No, 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 this is just a design. So basically, the, the core, the, the, this network designer or network implementer selected that, okay, in my network, I have so many users and I have so many subcarriers, so I'm going to use this kind of coding. Right, so this four out of two out of four is just design value, an example value. Example, it's not that everybody has to use has four of carriers. Next door might use some other number of carriers. Yeah. Okay, but, uh, the, what, the Since there are two bits, we need four combinations. Okay, I'm sorry, the code the codes are by the column, not by the rows. So zero zero is the first column, zero one one zero one one. Okay. okay. When I want to transmit zero zero, I I mean when this user one wants to transmit zero zero, they will send this symbol on the first carrier and then nothing on this third three carrier. Okay. When this one transmit one one, it will take the last column. And then whatever is written in that column, it will transmit that on that sub those sub carriers. Okay, this one will take what column now? Okay, so so basically, um, as written in this arrow, it says the third column. So basically, third column is one zero. All right, second column is zero one. Yeah, first column is zero zero. So that's correct. Third column. This is third column. This is first column. This is second column, and this is the last column. No, 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 no. no. Okay, this thing is no, no. They don't know. They don't know what is coming in, so they don't know the column. But what they do know is who the user is. So they have the code book for user. So the receiver for code for user six will have the same code book. Okay. Because it knows that the packet is coming from user six. Okay, so we know the we know the source, so we know the code book. From user six, right? Each user has a code book. Each user has a code. It's like this. When I speak to him, I speak in Arabic. When I speak to him, I speak in Chinese. It's a different code. So I know that I'm I'm talking to him, so I'm going to speak in Chinese. And different Chinese. That's my code. Those are simply the symbols. The vertical columns, one per symbol, two bit symbol, and the rows are the subcarriers. And therefore, the code as well. I mean, you know, the thing is, this is the code book, right? So, so the what the user one and the receiver will do is, will take this code book and tries to correlate with all four columns, and the best match will happen with one one. And then it will know that the probability of one one is ninety percent, probability of one zero is eighty percent, probability of zero zero is ten percent. Is that probabilistic? And then it will take the highest value. Okay.